our photography should be driven by emotions. We make images when something makes us feel in a certain way. So beautiful everywhere. My heart is so happy right now. So pretty and so beautiful. There's a very tricky balance uh, here though that we must be aware of and that we must keep on one hand we need to feel those emotions in order to make those images and on the other hand we need to be careful not to attach those emotions to the images we need to look at them for what they are the photograph must be able to evoke those feelings in the viewer otherwise only you will understand the image perhaps not even you once time has done its job of making everything fade away Today we're going to talk about why we attach feelings to our images, why and how to avoid it, and how to evoke emotions with our images so that everyone can feel what we felt when we made them. Maybe it doesn't look like it, but I'm very excited about it. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Emotions drive us, they guide us. We have to chase those feelings. This is the only way to make good images, to make photographs that are meaningful to us. But we need to make sure that we create photographs that recreate those emotions in those who were not there with us when we made them. The last thing we want is to leave people indifferent. Art should touch and move the audience. The truth is that we look at our own work through a distorted lens. We might think that they work better than they actually do. We might think that they communicate emotions and feelings better than they actually do. There are a handful of common traps I've fallen into in the past and I keep falling uh, that we should be aware of. The harder an image is to make, the more we have to go through to make it, the more connected we are going to feel to such photograph. An example is hiking. I love hiking and I have plenty of videos of those adventures here in this channel, but you might have a harder time finding images from those hikes in my website. I usually like a lot, I usually love the images that I make during a hike, but I know uh, from experience that they tend to age very bad, I mean compared to other images. The reason is very simple, it's because they are harder to make, especially in challenging hikes. For someone who doesn't know what it took just to get there, I mean from their point of view, the image could have been made from a viewpoint, I might have driven there, for all they know. But I, as the photographer, am aware of how much work went into making them and I might value them more than other images that, even though they might be better, they were easier to make. Now, those images might still work very well with other people when we offer some context. For example, when I show images here in my channel, in my videos, you have the back story of those images. You came along with me and you saw how much work, how much effort was put into making those images. Something very similar happens when we make the process of image making harder on purpose. For example, recently I was listening to an interview with a well-known photographer and they were making the case for tripods. They said that using a tripod for every one of your shots makes your photography not just slower but also more intentional. And I get it. I shot for almost two years exclusively on film and using a tripod, so I know where this person is coming from. These things can make the process a little bit more tactile, more engaging, maybe more enjoyable, and it might motivate us and inspire us uh, more to get out there and take photos. So by all means, please keep doing that if that helps you to get out and take some photos. The thing is that those images will, deservedly, feel more rewarding and that can be a problem. We might attach feelings to them, thinking they are something that they are not. That's the case when I'm taking long exposures, and of course those images take more time and more effort and more work than simple handheld shots. And even though I want to look at them the same way I look at any of my photos, I end up treating them a little bit differently. I think twice, three times or a dozen times before getting rid of them, even if they are really bad. That's because they were hard to make and it almost hurts to delete them. But again, my job as a photographer is to look at them from a distance, to look at them for what they are. And if they don't work, they don't work. As we saw, attaching feelings to our work is unavoidable, but we can do a few things to mitigate it a little bit. We should try to develop a sense of looking at our own work from the perspective of someone else. Ask yourself, what would you think of this image if you didn't know anything about it, about how it was made, where it was made, when it was made. 
We can also ask for feedback from other people, other photographers. In the end, though, only time will give us the required perspective so we can look at our own work from a distance. So shoot often, shoot a lot, and let them rest for a little bit. Don't look at them for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, or even a few years. Once you get back to those images, you will find out that most of them won't speak to you the same way that they used to do when they were fresh. That's okay, that's normal, that's part of the process. It happens to all of us. We are biased and we will always be to some degree. Again, this is okay. The most important thing is to be aware that this is happening. And I want to clarify that even though this applies especially to those who want to share their work with other people, this applies also when we have an audience of just one, that's us. The reason is because our feelings will fade away with time as well. So if we want to remember what we felt when we made those images, we might as well try to add those emotions to the photograph so we don't forget. Okay, so finally, let's see how we can capture emotions with our photography and share them with other people or with our future selves. When we are out and about taking photos and we see something, the first thing is to ask ourselves, what is it about this place? What is it about this subject? What is it that first caught my eye? How does it make me feel? So, of course, this video and all the other videos in this channel are from my perspective and from my experience. And I like to think that I don't photograph places or subjects. I photograph more a mood and atmosphere. That's why I chase conditions like fog, snow, storms, uh, darkness, or simply a sunrise. Those moments make me feel alive and they fill me with feelings that I want to share with others. I lean heavily on the conditions. I let nature do the heavy lifting for me. That's also why I like to photograph early in the morning when everyone is still asleep, including nature, and everything is so peaceful and stillness is everywhere. This is not the most beautiful place in the world. The conditions are nothing to write home about. But I feel at peace here. And while we can't photograph something that is invisible, we can hint it. We can use elements in the photograph, like for example, snow or ice to hint cold. If we do color photography, we can use warmer colors or cooler colors to communicate a feeling that way. Something that is not visible, but we can hint it, we can suggest it. This is something I like to do by hiding details in the shadows. There is a good reason why most scary scenes in horror movies happen at night. There is something about the darkness. Perhaps it's the lack of light that makes us pay more attention, closer attention to our other senses. Whatever it is, we can and should use this natural response to the darkness in our photography. We can use it to create some mystery and perhaps make the viewer a little bit uncomfortable. Of course, we still need some kind of light in our photographs, otherwise it could be just dark, but isolated sources of light work wonders here. Think of street lights, faraway houses, or even the headlights of a car. If you are out in nature and there are no artificial lights around you, you can always use the full moon or just photograph the stars. Of course, we can and should use people and animals to create emotions. There is nothing like someone standing in the middle of nowhere in the vastness of the landscape, or someone facing something much bigger than themselves, feeling insignificant and very small. This can be done with familiar objects as well, like this house in the Oregon coast. It is placed in a landscape that is much bigger than itself, a house that cannot do anything but surrender to the power of nature. Or we can create the opposite feeling by presenting the subject higher in the frame or bigger against a smaller landscape. Long exposures can create stillness where there is chaos. I like to use long exposures to remove the ripples and the waves on water, for example. But they can also be used to create some drama by showing the movement of otherwise static clouds in the sky. 
Even black and white can be used to manipulate the feelings and emotions of an image. By getting rid of the colors, we are removing familiarity with what's pictured in the photograph. Also, a high contrast black and white image will feel louder than a lower contrast one, which will feel more subtle. By photographing all the stuff, all houses, all cars, all furniture, decay in general, we can evoke nostalgia. A world that doesn't exist anymore, that maybe reminds us of our childhood or of our parents' childhood. And finally, it can be as simple as capturing the beauty in the world. No mood, no drama, not in your face, just something beautiful to look at, to appreciate, to be grateful for. Let's not forget about the way we can present and share our work. In a book, we can use captions and descriptions to frame the images in a very different way and creating emotions that wouldn't be there otherwise without that extra information. In a video, we can show the images as the result of a long and complicated process. We can take the audience along with us in that journey. We can pair our images, we can group them, we can decide to share just contact sheets and not individual images at all. Photography is much more than presenting a single image. It can be used along with other mediums or in other mediums as well. And all of that is gonna change the way the image is gonna be perceived and it's gonna change the emotions the image can evoke in the viewer. So I hope the video was helpful and it gave you some food for thought. Of course, there is no right or wrong here, like anything in photography. I, this was just my opinion, the way I see it, but this is a topic that I'm very passionate about. I would love to have a conversation with you. So feel free to leave a comment down below and we can exchange ideas about, uh, about this topic. As usual, before letting you go, I would like to thank all of my patrons for making this dream of mine uh, possible. I would like to uh, say welcome to the new ones. Uh, and just a reminder that we have a weekly live stream where we talk about all things photography. We expand on some of uh, these topics a little bit more. Uh, we're going to be hosting another live stream tomorrow, Monday, the uh, 28th. Of, uh, March so stay tuned for that and I would also like to highlight today the work of one of uh, my patrons in this case Olaf Ashman I hope I pronounced that name right but he's got beautiful work on his Instagram account I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below so you can check it out and give him a follow because I think his work deserves it that's all for today thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one